if anyone's suing any of them and goes to Sean, where's, where's the, um, let's say there's a property sitting in here, and says, I want the property. Sean's saying, well, it ain't mine. It belongs to the trustee. Ingrid says, ain't mine either. The children say, not ours either. The company says, not ours either. The charity says, well, none of us have got any right to it. So the beautiful thing is, yes, it remains safe. Is that sexy? <laughs> and the other thing with trust I'll show you shortly is you can also stream the income between them to keep tax down to a minimum. So what this means now, so Sean and Ingrid have got their trust for their business. Let's say Sean and Ingrid are now going to go and do some share training, okay? Should they be doing it in that structure, in their own name or something else? Something else? Something else? Anyone disagree? A separate trust or company for shares. Now, let's say they're going to be doing some property buying, okay? You've, something else? You've anticipated me. You must be psychic. Um, so, essentially, with, with a property, so buying it in a share trust or in a different structure? Different. different. Now, be aware of property trust. You've got to get proper advice on this before you do it, only because you can have some negative gearing problems with these things. So you've got to make sure, it depends on your situation, it may be better in some situations to buy it in your own name, but actually have what's called loan agreements or mortgages back over the properties, okay? And that way you still get the same result. So it depends on the situation. A trust is better, but some situations you're better off to do it in your own name, okay? My preference is a trust vote as much as possible. Okay? So... Is that all pretty clear? You getting the concept so far? Now, some of you say, well, this is great, Warren, but I've already got a heap of properties in my own name. Anyone in that situation? Yeah. What you can do is make sure you buy your future properties or shares or whatever in a trust, and you can gradually move things over into a trust, or if you've got properties in your own name, you can do this. Let's say you've got three properties worth $2 million, Let's say you've only got 600,000 bucks of debt. There's a strategy you might, might want to create to have a finance trust over here, a bank finance type of trust, and by using paperwork, and don't ask me how because I'll lose you, so I don't, I don't want to confuse you at 9.30 at night on a Saturday night when you could be at the pub or somewhere else or raging out with the schoolies on the town. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you'd love to be doing that, wouldn't you? Um, you can do strategies to effectively create an extra 1 million bucks of debt over the property, so it goes from 600,000 to 1.6 million. So if you've got 2 million bucks of property and 1.6 million bucks of debt, how, how, how attractive is that for someone wanting to sue you now? Not very, because what happens if I'm going <coughs> to sue you, and as a lawyer I see that, I'm going to probably say to the person, you won't get any money. Because by the time you foreclose on the properties, you force an auction, you'll knock 20% off the price, you've got bank costs, won't get anything. <coughs> okay. I'm sure by now you're getting really turned on, right? <laughs> Is it all pretty clear so far? Everyone covering that? I've got two minutes to take up the questions before I do the next part. I've covered the, the, the main part. So I'll take a few questions now. Okay, you're the best looking, you can go first. And make sure you say your name as well. Uh, Wayne. Hi, Wayne. I'm Warren, pretty close. How are you, Warren? Um, with a trust structure, if you're sole trustee in the trust and someone goes that trust, is it easier then to, say, knock that trust over and get the assets out of it rather than a trust with yourself as a trustee and someone else? I've lost you, sorry. <laughs> Two people in a trust, so there's... T two entities in a trust. If you're the only entity in a trust and someone wants to sue you to get assets out of that trust, when it gets into the high courts of law, they can say, oh, well, he's the only entity in that trust. Yeah, so if there's only one person money controlling it. There is a recent case, the Rich Star case, which is showing that courts are a little bit more inclined now to say with trust, if there's only one person in the trust, that they're really controlling it. So how you structure your trust now is important, yeah. I mean, it still makes a big difference having a trust and not having a trust because you will literally, it's a bit like having insect repellent, you know, you will actually fend off a lot of people. A lot of people at the moment that see a trust won't even bother suing you. But, but 
still on a more fine-tuned technicality, yeah. You want to... The more people you've got in the trust and the way you structure it, the better. Just wait for the mic. Jake. Um, Hi, Jake. I opened up a trust six months ago and bought an off-the-plan property. But I'm just wondering, my parents got properties, can I transfer that, their property, which is their, their name, to my trust? They can transfer it into your trust, but they pay stamp duty. It's all right. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, how about the off-the-plan property? So does that mean the whole, all the four properties will be safe? Something happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to stop. What? What? Are, with questions, I, I want more questions to clarify what I've taught, rather than specific advice on situation. You're better off to talk to us afterwards. Otherwise, everyone else doesn't benefit from it. But thanks. Any other one? Yeah. Hi. My name's Tom. Hi, Tom. Uh, not having done anything at all with trusts, what's the reason for having separate trusts, like you were displaying there for shares? Sure property and that sort of thing? Good question. Um, very simply, Tom, because if it's all in the one trust, let's just say that, like with um, Sean and Ingrid, let's just say that Sean and Ingrid just plonked all their properties and shares in the, in the same trust of their business. Let's say Sean personally trains me and I basically, he gets me to do some bench pressing and I push it and I tear my muscles and I can't move anymore, so I think I want to sue this mug, so I, 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 sue, I sue him. Are all his assets now at risk in the trust? Everything? Every asset in the trust is now at risk. Do you see that? Because the properties, the shares are in it. So if he's got them in separate trusts entirely, they're not at risk. So it means only the business is isolated. Oh, you're just doing the yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And okay, I'll take, I'll take two more questions. Anyone got mics? Yeah, hello, it's David. Um, my question is, if, if you're already um, running it through a business and he's going to see you, he's actually suing the business, not the trust, isn't he? Well, the business is in the trust, so the trust is being sued because the business is running through the trust. However, that's why the separate trust is, is, is the key, having the separate trust... And even if it's in your own name, you're safer if your business is in a trust. So we're suing the business, but the business is being run for the trust, so the entity will be sued. Yep. Okay, two more questions. The lady at the back there? So far, it's only been guys. Hi, my name is Holly. Uh, my question was, with that uh, billion-dollar little letter thing there, um, is that like just a nice little cover letter that to, for looks or can you some way actually work it so you do get that million dollars out of that two million dollar property portfolio to protect it? Okay, it depends on when you get the bank loan and things like that. So there's a little bit of creative paperwork to do it. Yeah, is it just paperwork or is it... We try as much as possible to make it a genuine... There has to be some genuine monetary transfers happening there. Yeah. But yeah, normally with a line of credit it can be done. One more question I'm going to take. This guy over here. Yeah, Warren, my name's Kim. Hi, Kim. Um, Warren, if, uh, if you've got a trust, a family trust, yep. and a company running it, yep. and, and you've also got a working company outside the trust or, or below the trust, um, and, you, and you've got things in your own name and you're, you're the trustee or the appointee for the company and the trust... The working company is, is the entity that gets sued. Do they, because you've got things in your own name, can you, they still take them off you as the appointee of the trust? I've got a bit lost there, I have to admit. All right. If, you, if you've got a trust and you've got a, a company running the trust or yeah. acting, as, acting for the trust yeah. and you're the appointee of that, um, of that company... But you've also got assets in your name, yeah. and that and the and the working company that's under the trust. They've got two companies. One's under the trust. Yeah. If the working company gets sued, if you've got things in in your name and you're the director of the working company under the trust, yeah. can they still come at you even though it, it's outside? The, it's only a working company. They may be able to. Yeah, I mean, I might. You might have to ask for one later. I think everyone got lost, didn't they? Yeah, I did myself, to be frank. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I know what you're saying. 
We're going to keep going now. Um, next time we do questions, if I do them, I really am going to stress you must ask questions related to the content, okay? Just in terms of the more simple, only because just, just, just more what I'm trying to do is make sure you understand, okay? But feel free to ask questions, by the way. No problem. Uh, Derek and Newt, myself, afterwards, we'd be more than glad to answer those kind of questions, okay? Okay. So, protecting your assets. So tax minimisation, slashing tax by thousands of dollars. Okay, alarming tax facts. <laughs> Anyone recognise this guy here? Sixty-nine percent tax is what the average Australian is now paying, according to National Taxpayers Association. Forty-eight percent is the number of businesses that go bankrupt indirectly because of government action, or taxes, or whatever else. One day per week. That's the average amount of time a small business now spends on compliance. Does that sound about right? Anyone small business? In bookkeeping and paperwork? Yep. Sounds right, Sean? Yep. yep. Oh, believe me, I think ours is more than that. It's, it's shocking. The amount of government... Jamie and I are having a whinge together be, before I spoke today about payroll tax. Anyone here have the unfortunate grief of paying payroll tax at the moment? Yeah. Payroll tax is basically where businesses get taxed for giving people jobs. I'm totally serious. I mean, it's crazy. It really is nuts. Um, Jamie and I were talking about doing a website which is like called refuse to pay payroll tax com and see how many businesses would subscribe to it. Um, <laughs> oh no, we are serious. I, I think it's an immoral tax. Um, just to show you what tax can do to your wealth creation plans by not structuring properly, just take a good look at these figures here. Okay. If you, if you invest $100,000, let's say if you're writing covered calls or any other strategies you learn, you manage to average 20% per annum. I know it's a pretty high amount, but <coughs> let's just say you manage to do that. Look at the difference in figures. For 41000 if you use a company structure and pay 30% tax, you immediately go to $672,000, so an extra $231,000. If you pay, if you use self-money superannuation and you pay only 15% tax, $990,000, an extra $318,000. If you pay 0% tax and you become a, perp a perpetual traveller and go to Fiji, or you, you're running through a super fund after 60, 1.378 million. Is that quite high? Pretty significant? Hey, by the way, did you win the competition? Yes. Oh, well done. Thanks, sir. There's a competition that she, that she went in, it was on Facebook. So there you go. <laughs> okay. I'd say it before I forgot. I meant to ask you. Um, 20 years. Okay, so if you invest um, $100,000 over 20 years, just have a look at those figures now. Have a good read of them. The difference by just simply structuring yourself properly. Is that worth structuring properly? Okay, so all these guys at the seminar are fantastically teaching you how strategies to build wealth. I've just shown you the easiest way to make wealth just by structuring yourself properly. Do you see by just using superannuation? So, for example, let's say we've got $100,000 that you're willing to wait for 20 years to touch it. So you keep your tax to 15%, you invest it. The difference is you can end up making double or triple the amount of money for your retirement. Now, according to statistics by 2028, there's going to be four, sorry, two working Australians to every one pensioner. Right now, there's four to one. So what's that going to do to pensions moving forward? We're not going to have pensions next few years, more next 20 years, because what's happening is the population is ageing, so because of that, the number of people to fund it is going down. It's a bit like a company where you've got less staff who are doing sales and more staff doing administration work. Well, the sales staff are going to have to either work a lot harder or the company is going to go broke, correct? So... Similarly, this is what's happening in our country right now. The number of people to fund the pension is dropping alarmingly. So hence, if you're wondering why your taxes and government charges are going, it's because you're running out of money. And likewise, pensions are going to go... Okay? So who's going to have to fund your retirement in 20 years' time? Correct. I often ask, it's either going to be God, the government, or yourself. So I think yourself's a good point to start off with. 
Okay, <coughs> so let's look at some practical ways to slash your tax. Who's learning a bit tonight? It's interesting, isn't it, when your eyes start to open? So, income splitting. Do not feed the tax man. It's not a good investment. The best thing, one of the biggest secrets of the rich is using the trust, the family trust, like Sean does now, to split income. Because it, it splits your income, it reduces your capital gains tax when you sell it. <coughs> I'll give you a practical example right now of what you can do just by having a trust. <coughs> I'll show you a few different examples, but let's just say you buy your investment property in a trust, okay? You buy it for $500,000. It goes up to $800,000, let's say. Let's say there's 50 grand of costs. You make a $250,000 capital gain. Now, the beautiful thing is there's a 50% discount law. <coughs> if you hold it more than 12 months, it will cut your capital gain down to 125K. Is that pretty good so far? Be aware that that discount, that wonderful discount I just showed you, does not apply if you buy your property through a company in its own right. Big no-no. So never buy it through a company in its own right. If you buy in a company, you must make sure on your offer and acceptance you write the company is trustee for whatever the trust is. Okay? So 125K. Let's just say that you've got Donald and Daisy Duck. Let's just say that... Um, I'll keep it simple for the moment. Let's say Donald's the big income earner running a um, duck feeding factory. And he... he and he earns $150,000. And let's say that Daisy earns only $10,000, okay? Who's paying all the tax here, Donald or Daisy? Okay. So who do we want this capital gain to go to, Donald or Daisy? Agree? But let me ask you something. In whose name would the, would the traditional accountant be telling you to buy that property in? Donald or Daisy? Donald, Why? Negative gearing, that's right. So Donald would basically be, he would buy it for negative gearing, but guess what? He's then going to pay all the tax when he sells it. So do you see why I'd be much happier to have the property sitting in the trust? Because then that, that capital gain can be given to Daisy and the difference in tax will be quite incredible. Donald would pay on $125,000 in tax somewhere in the vicinity of around about $55,000. Okay. Daisy would probably end up paying more like $35,000. Is that a big difference? Huge difference. So maybe a bit less actually, more like about thirty grand, I think. So straight away, you see the importance of tax planning and property buying straight away? Now, not just that... Um, so companies, 30% tax, limited liability, great for asset protection. I mentioned about don't use to buy and hold because you lose your capital gains discount. The family trust is really about the splitting the income, controlling not owning assets. So, for example, this situation here, we've mentioned here about, like with Sean and Ingrid, but neither of them actually own the trust. Ingrid indirectly should be controlling the trust with the assets because she's the one who's least at risk. But nevertheless... The key is controlling it, not owning it. Let's just look at another example of trust here. So I'll put the camera back on it. So what we've got now, we've got Donald and Daisy Duck, and we've got their four kids, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Spewey. <laughs> Spewey's a newborn child. Um, they've got companies and trusts, and they, and they also... They're really big believers in charities and they're actually like the Catholic Church. Let's just use the Catholic Church. Okay, because I know we all love him. Um, a lot of my friends are Catholic, actually. So we'll just say that they, that they like the Catholic Church. Now, let's just say that Donald's earning $150,000, as we mentioned, and Daisy's earning $10,000. Okay? Now, let's just say with Donald and Daisy Duck that... Donald actually decides they're going to do some share training or 
Forex trading. I mean, who's spoken so far this weekend on the share and options trading? I think Andrew Baxter? Yeah, so Andrew Baxter's options trading. So Donald and Daisy come along the 21st century, get pretty inspired, and um, start doing options trading. Now, let's just say that Donald did it in his name, and he earns $100,000. Is he going to be paying a crap load of tax? Correct. So the accountant says, hmm, this is a problem. I know what to do. Let's just put it in Daisy's name. Now, <laughs> that all sounds good. The problem is, is Daisy actually training in this situation? No, Donald's in the training. So the tax office, what are they likely to say if they audit them? They'll be like, uh, hello. This is looking a little bit dodgy to us. So that won't wash too well. There's another problem too. Right now, let's just say that a year goes by, they start earning good profits. Donald suddenly wakes up one day, he's just been to a personal development seminar, he comes home with tears coming out of his eyes, running down his beak. <laughs> and he says to Daisy, Daisy, I've realised now the true meaning of universal love and what it means to connect with the consciousness of the divine. And he says, I'm going to shave my beak and I'm going to go down to the highest mountain and I'm going to go on a spiritual retreat for two years. And he disappears. Now, how much income is Donald now earning? Now, Daisy thinks, yikes. So Daisy starts earning income. She starts an internet marketing business, selling eggs. And, <laughs> and she makes $200,000. Now, she's making $200,000 plus money from the trading. Let's assume that trading's still going because she's now doing it. Who's paying all the tax now? See? Now, in the trust here, what would happen is this now. Huey, Dewey, Louie and Spewey, assuming they're all under 18, can each earn $2,500 tax-free, okay? So $10,000 can be given straight out tax-free to the kids. Now, let's say that 10% goes to charity and Donald and Daisy want to give $10,000 to the Catholic Church. Let me ask you something. If Donald and Daisy gave ten grand to the Catholic Church, is it tax-deductible, yes or no? Everyone says that. The answer is actually no. If you give money to a church, and in fact to most charities in Australia, it is not tax deductible. There's only a specific approved list for that. So if they gave it out of the normal, they first pay their tax. Robert Kiyosaki says the rich um, earn, spend, then pay tax. The middle class earn, pay tax, then spend. So what would happen is Donald and Daisy would earn, they'd spend, they'd pay tax, then